The Netherlands may be a small country, but there is a lot to see. Windmills, cheese market and wooden shoes. Innovative water management, bow fields, canals of Amsterdam and Van Gogh paintings. <laughs> and of course, bicycles. But there is more. Discover Matt in the Netherlands. The cubic houses in Rotterdam. Mathematical artwork on the roundabout. The Sweer houses in Den Bosch. Fortifications. Formulas on walls in Leiden. A floating bicycle roundabout. Welcome to the ECMO 2020 in the Netherlands. Bienvenidos a ECMO 2020 en Ermelandse. Hey, uh, welcome to ECMO 2020 in Netherlands. Benvenuti a ECMO 2020 nei Paesi Bassi. Bienvenue au ECMO 2020 aux Pays-Bas. Welcome to EGMO 2020 in Holland. Herzlich willkommen zu der ECMO 2020 in den Niederlanden. Welkom op de ECMO 2020 in Nederland. Good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening. Hello. Hello girls, participants from all over the world. Hello leaders, deputy leaders, observers. And hello to all other people who might be watching with us. Welcome to this opening ceremony of the 9th European Girls Mathematical Olympiad. ECMO 2020. Are you ready for the team parade? It will shortly come to you, but first my fellow organizers will say a few words to you. And we also have some messages from our gold supporter ING and from Dutch science journalist Hans Heckenberg. Enjoy! As you all know, the plans for this ECMO have changed quite drastically in the past few weeks. Due to the current corona crisis, we could not let you come to Egmont aan Zee anymore. Instead, we decided to hold the first virtual ECMO ever, and we are very happy and proud to have 205 girls from 52 different countries participating in this virtual ECMO. A virtual ECMO? That may sound a bit, well, virtual, but the contest you will participate in will be very real. In the next few days, you will spend two times four and a half hours working on six very challenging problems. I hope you will enjoy them very much, and I would like to ask you to keep the problems secret until everyone has finished. So it will be an enjoyable contest for everyone. Now on Tuesday, your leaders will have finished marking, and then we can announce the results. And, of course, the medal winners. Apart from the contest, we have planned many more activities for you this week. There will be a cube mosaic contest and there will be colorful nail art. There will be a forum where you can discuss all nice solutions to the contest problems. There will be a bingo and lots of music from all over the world. So we will try our best to help you get in touch with the other participants through the forum, Instagram and other social media. And will you join us on our virtual excursion to the famous flower gardens of the Keukenhof on Monday. You will get to see loads of these. The four people you have just seen are all members of the ECMO organizing committee and I'm the fifth and last member. At this point we would like to take a moment to thank all our committee members for the great effort they put in making this virtual ECMO possible. We've seen a lot of flexibility and creativity in this last minute change of plans. We are also very grateful to our supporters who kept supporting us in these difficult times. And finally, we are very grateful to you for joining us in this virtual happening. We hope you have a great week and look forward to hearing from you. 
We now give the floor to our gold supporter, ING. Hi everyone, and welcome to this special edition of European Girls Mad Olympics. As ING, we are very proud to sponsor this year's event, and I wish you a lot of success and a lot of fun in this special format. Greetings from Amsterdam, um, where the weather is uh, lovely. And uh, I'm here to uh, congratulate you for participating in this uh, event. And I'm also very proud to be able to host this event. I studied mathematics uh, myself in, uh, in, uh, in the 80s. And it, it always uh, it comes close to my heart when I see people practicing uh, mathematics. And you are doing this uh, during these days and you are even competing at a very high level. So that makes me uh, feel good, makes me proud to be part of it. I wish you the very best of luck, uh, all the success to compete in this uh, event and uh, may the best uh, win. We'll see each other in a couple of days uh, when we close the uh, event. But for now, um, I hope you enjoy and have a good take at the, uh, at the problems also help you have uh, some fun and uh, we'll be able to make some friends uh, along the way. So, see you in a couple of days. Thank you. Good luck. Now comes Dutch science journalist Ant Hekkenberg who would like to say a few words to you. Hi everyone. Well, this is not quite how I imagined that I would get to talk to you all today. But uh, I'm just really glad that the ECMO is still taking place and I'm really glad that I get to address you all because I realize who is in my audience right now. I realize that there are eager minds and creative talents and ambitious girls and that is pretty humbling because I also realize that you are going to go on to achieve breakthroughs and make discoveries and run countries and win prizes like the Abel Prize and the Nobel Prize. So I'm pretty psyched to be on your screen right now. My name is Anne Hekkenberg and I'm active on social media as girl for science and the reason for that handle is actually pretty obvious, I guess. Um, I, I really, really enjoy science. I really, really enjoy the STEM field, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And I also really enjoy encouraging young people uh, who are considering pursuing a career in the STEM fields. So in that sense, I hope that I get to encourage you in the upcoming years as you figure out your career paths. Because girls, I'm going to be straightforward with you, uh, we really need you. Uh, the STEM fields are of increasing importance in the world. We live in a very technological world and that is not just true in the obvious sense, in the sense of smartphones and cameras and, and navigational systems. Smart tech is basically in every aspect of our lives. Uh, without smart tech, we wouldn't be able to feed the world population or heal our sick. And that is only going to be more and more true in the upcoming years. So the STEM fields need more people and more importantly, we need you. <laughs> because um, what we need is smart and logical and creative and social minds, we need them all. We need more diverse teams because diverse teams are able to look at problems from a new and, and creative point of view. So as you probably know, there is a shortage of girls and women in the STEM fields and I'm telling you now, the more diverse teams are the teams that are going to make the real difference in the future. But I'm done preaching why we need you, I promise. Um, more importantly, I want to tell you girls to have fun. Have fun at the EGMO. Have fun cracking mathematical problems. Have fun just in school and basically just in life. Um, do what you love to do. And I can't guarantee that your career is always going to be easy, that it's always going to be smooth sailing. But I can promise you that if you do what you love, it's going to be worth it. So enjoy yourselves. Uh, and of course, I want to wish you all the best of luck in the upcoming days at the EGMO. Um, you're already champions in my, in my eyes, and I really hope that I get to meet you all in the future. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed these messages from ING and Anse Hekkenberg. Now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for, the team parade.
a lovely team parade. We loved all your creative contributions. But what was happening all the time with these numbers flipping around? Tom Verhoef will explain it in the next video. Hello, my name is Tom Verhoef and I will tell you about the design of the ECMO 2020 team parade, now a virtual parade. To streamline the team parade, we wanted the teams to have something to do on stage. To collaborate on something mathematical and also something a bit puzzling. I had thought about this already in 2009 at the opening ceremony of the 50th IMO in Germany. What can a team do in the 10 seconds of stage time they have? Something with numbers? Or geometry? And then it occurred to me that team members usually line up. In doing so, they need to choose an order. The team could change their order repeatedly to show each possible permutation exactly once. For the audience to make sense of this, the transition from one permutation to the next should be simple. A neighbor swap is the simplest change to the linear arrangement. Two adjacent elements change place as shown on the left. The transitions on the right are forbidden. Can you present all permutations once doing only neighbor swaps? This is a famous and well-known problem in combinatorics. It was solved in the 17th century in the context of change ringing. Look that up on YouTube. At the IMO it would take a team of six members too long to show all 720 permutations, even with lots of practice. So I investigated the possibility to reduce that number by making some team members indistinguishable. For example, three colored blue and three orange. This reduces the number of permutations to six over three or twenty. At the time, I didn't know if this problem was solvable. To make the problem more accessible, draw a graph whose vertices are the permutations and where an edge 
connect two permutations that differ in a single neighbor swap. The question now is to find a path in this graph that visits each vertex exactly once, also known as a Hamiltonian path. For the color combination 3 plus 3 it turns out to be doable. It helps to draw the graph in a different way, but in general, when colors occur more than once, it is not doable. Consider for example the color combination 2 plus 2. Try it. In 1965, Derek H. Lemer conjectured that when it is not possible, you can omit some permutations and visit those as sidesteps, doubling some other permutations. He called these spurs. The spurs are clearly visible in the graph for 2 plus 2. I proved Lemer's conjecture for two colors in 2015. At ECMO 2020, we decided to let the teams perform neighbor swaps on five objects placed next to each other on stage. The ECMO logo and the digits 2, 0, 2 and 0. There are five over 2, 2, 1, that is 120 divided by 4, which equals 30, permutations. At least two spurs are needed in this case. The ECMO 2020 team parade traverses this graph twice. Here is a still from the animation to accompany the team parade. The paper where I describe my IMO 2009 thoughts is referenced here. My proof of Lemur's conjecture for two colors. And finally, my article about four mathematical designs for ECMO 2020. I wish you all good inspiration for solving the problems. Enjoy math! We hope that this explanation by Tom Verhoef has helped to clarify what was happening during the team parade. Now we are almost at the end of this opening ceremony. So here is Viviane Kiel from the ECMO Advisory Board to officially open this ECMO 2020. Dear Owen, to have some Dutch feeling at home, I made nine tulips. Nine tulips for the ninth ECMO. In this special virtual ECMO, no one of us is strolling through the vast Dutch tulip fields. Each and every one, contestants, leaders, deputies, coordinators, organizers, must do their best to ensure fair play. I believe all of you play fair. Thus, this ECMO is official. It is an official competition. The results are official and published on ECMO.org. The medals are shipped to you, more exactly to half of you. I declare open the 9th European Girls Mathematical Olympiad, ECMO 2020. I wish you good luck for the exams and, even more important, I wish you fun during the exams. Also, enjoy the virtual events the organizing committee set up. For example, enjoy the tulip fields in the virtual tour through Koikenhof. Thank you for watching this opening ceremony. I wish you good luck with the contest and hope to hear from you this week.